In this video, I'll show you how to make an IR sniper. You'll need a IR torch. You just want to make sure it's an LED torch and a 940 nm. This one's a 5 watt. You just want to make sure it has essentially just a on off function. You don't want any, any other modes to it. So just essentially just on off. You also make, you want to make sure you don't get the VS cell. So make sure it's an LED IR torch. Just some prototype board, some header pins, some wire, and you need a just an octocoupler. So it's a 4N33. And that's pretty much all you need. I've also got some 3D printed parts that I also will put on printables that I'll use to make it. So the first step we'll do is you just want to cut the board to the right um, size. So I've already cut one already. Zoom in. So if you're following along, it's essentially just too high by, I think it's by 28 across. So it'll just sit like that. So the first thing I'll do is just, I'll just solder the header pins on. You can essentially make it um, smaller, you don't need to go the full length. You only need to go from probably just from pin 1 to pin 8 if you wanted to make a smaller version. I just like the, the, the length of it, it's small ergonomics once you actually put the case on it. So you can hold it like that. So you just want the 8 at the front and then there'll be 10 at the back. So it's just, just going to sit like that. And with this case, it'll just sit on top. So 
but that's why I've sort of gone the full length is like when you hold it it's just nice to have something to hold on instead of being a bit shorter there so the next step is we're gonna have to pull the back of the torch off So this is just where the switch is, so that turns it on and off. It's just a switch for the negative, so the battery will go against that and that's the negative. Um, the switch would just essentially switch the power, the negative to the actual body of the case, so it makes the whole um, case of the torch at the negative, so it turns it on and off. So to pull the back of the switch apart, you just got these two little dimples there. And you just want to get a long nose pliers or something to go in there and just be able to twist it off. So let's just thread it on. And that's the switch so that's just on and off and there's just a little bit of rubber piece there which we can push out so what we want to do is remove that switch from the, the board um, the easiest way probably is because it's soldered on both sides I just find it easy if we just cut the switch off Then I can just desolder it. Usually, if you put a bit of extra solder on, it helps to make the job a bit easier to take off. So, just turn my soldering iron on. Just give it a little bit extra solder and it'll come off easier. Just clean it up a bit. So the next step is Soldering the octocoupler onto it. So we've got a, a marker here. So this mark there indicates that that's pin one. So we've got one, two, three, and it goes four, five, six. So we only need um, pin one and two, which goes to the flipper. So pin one goes to pin two on the flipper, and then pin two goes to a ground, which we'll just go to, we'll use pin eight. Um, the next ones are pin five, which will go to the IR LED, and pin six will go to the negative on the battery. So it's gonna go, so these ones are going to the actual this board here. For the pins that we don't need, or the legs, I usually just chop it off because we don't, just not to confuse and get mixed up. So we've got pin 1, pin 2, and pin 5 and pin 6. So the next step is we have to find out on the actual board, which one goes to the negative on the battery. So looking at this, I might just use a multimeter just to make sure. Just give me a sec. So 
So the negative on the going to the battery is pin 6. So what we want to do is use the multimeter, holding it this, and then just check which side it corresponds to. So this one will go to pin 6 on the octocoupler. So I want to sort of just place it maybe like that. So this side here is pin 6 and that's pin 5. Alright, pin six four, just double check again. So this side is the um, the negative battery. So we want to make sure pin six is going to that side there. So it'll sit like that. And then pin five goes to um, to the IR LED, which will go to the body of the torch on that side. So I'll just bend the pins. Just so it's a bit hard to focus. Like that. And we want to have that as centered as possible, just because the case that I've three printed, we want it to sit over to, on top of that. Just show. So it'll look something like that. So that's pin six going to the negative, and then pin five is going to the body of the torch, going to the IR LED, and it's sitting as centered as possible. I'll just solder that in. So it looks something like that. And just make sure that it's not shorting in between. Okay. And then we can bend these wire pins across a bit. And we just want to get our wire. So 
I'm using 24AWG wire size. Uh, you can use whatever size you want, pretty much. It doesn't really matter too much. And we just tin the wire. And we're just going to solder it on. It should look like that. For pin one, just so we know which one it is, I'm just going to strip the end of it and leave the other one as is so we can have something to identify the difference of the two. So pin one has been stripped. So this one goes to pin two on the flipper side. So next we can put the wire through the 3D printed end cup. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can probably get away with, you can get away with just using the parts you have from the torch and just put a little hole into the rubber and thread the wire through and it should still work, it'll work the same so I pull the wire through and hopefully I can shut it so it still fits on which is good And we just put this back through the end of the torch cut and assemble it. So it's just going to go through like that and that's just the end. Now we just got to put this back on. Just make sure when you put this back on it, it's, it sits tight because this is where it contacts to the, to the actual board. And if it doesn't contact properly, the LED or the torch won't work. Get it in. So just make sure it's sitting all the way down the bottom before you tighten it. Just tighten it. Okay, 
so that's the torch side done. Next, we just want to get the PCB board off here. So that's what I'm just going to coil the wire up so it's a bit neater. And thread it through the case. It'll look like that. And then we just got to solder onto the board. So we're just going to solder it to pin 2 and then pin 8 which is for the ground. So we know the one that we've stripped is for pin 2 which goes to the pin 1 on the octocoupler. Line it up. Sorry. Let's put a little bit more solder on it. And the next wire goes to pin 8, so we just want to strip it as close to that as possible, just to keep the length of the wire nice. I'm just going to pin 8, which is ground. So pin that's one, two, which is going to pin six on the octocoupler. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight there, which is the ground. 
sorry, that's not going to pin 6, that's going to pin 1. Unlock the coupler. Then we can put the case on. So once it's all tested, you can glue the case on. There's a couple tabs here on each side. There you can put a little bit of um, super glue, put it on and just glue it in place. But we'll just check to make sure it's working first. So I'll zoom out a bit. Just got to get a battery, put it in. So once it's glued up, it'll look like that, which looks quite nice. And I've made it, like like I said, it's the full length, so you can hold it. And it's got a bit better hold there. Um, you just want to go into infrared, IR, GPI settings. Make sure it's onto external, so it's going to pin 2. Go back. Universal remotes, TV. And I'll just get another flipper so we can show you. So I've just got the transparent version this week. So I go infrared as well on this one. Got to turn on the debug. <coughs> okay, so that's on the debug, and if we press this one, it's sending the signal from this eye touch. So it's cycling through all the different um, signals. So it's pretty cool. So the thing to notice with these torches is that the beam is very direct. So it's got to zoom in and out, but if you're quite close to the TV, the beam is going to be very direct. So you're going to have to probably point it at the TV. Um, I guess essentially what this is hopefully going to do is give you a bit better long range. And that's why it's called the IR sniper. You've got to be a bit more accurate with it as opposed to having something that's uh, very, quite a big flat, like light flash. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if you guys make it, um, how well it works. I haven't actually tested it too much, but I've had a fair bit of a request to show how to make it, so um, you can have a go at playing with it yourself. So, thanks for watching the video. Um, like if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, and subscribe if you want to see anything in the future.